and pick up with the LA Galaxy, a, a club that everybody knows about, one of the original clubs in MLS, five MLS Cups, like tons of history. Actually, it was funny. I, I just saw an article come up today on MLSsoccer.com about how the 2001 LA Galaxy team uh, was set and ready to go off to the Club World Championships uh, or the Club World Cup. And because of issues with the sponsoring entity, they just scrapped everything and just like paid out the club some money and didn't even have the tournament. So that would have been the one huh. time an MLS club ended up going to the Club World <laughs> Cup. Because then the following year in 2002, they changed it to the CONCACAF Champions League. And as we know, uh, an MLS club has never won that. So uh, the Galaxy have been in all sorts of history throughout the MLS. Uh, California and L.A. is a hotbed of talent. Even you go down to the college level, like UCLA uh, has put out, I think, more national team players than any program uh, in the United States. Obviously, it's a little different in the modern day with academies and other developments, uh, developmental areas, entities, whatever you want to call it. Um, but still, California, hotbed of soccer. Sacramento's coming in in a couple of years. But we're going to focus on the Galaxy right now. A uh, lot of movement in their roster. Players in, players out. Um, Sasha Kleschen is in. Alexander Katai is in. Emiliano Insua, Danilo Acosta, Eric Lopez, Javier Hernandez, and Nick Dupuy uh, coming up from LA Galaxy 2 there. Uh, so some some names here, Mike. We got some MLS names in Kleschen, Katai, and Acosta. Did that jump out to you? Is this like are these like big signings for the Galaxy? Uh, they're they're typical uh, signings for the Galaxy, right? They usually go after the bigger names, uh, and these are bigger names in an MLS circle, uh, especially Sasha Kleschen. He's been around for a long time. I mean, even his days in LA for Chivas USA, uh, and then with the Red Bulls, with Orlando City, he's an MLS veteran. You kind of know what you're getting from him. He's getting a little bit older, but he he's still going to produce a little bit on the field. He's not he's not going to produce you know his his leading the league in assist type days like he did with the Red Bulls a few years ago, but. Uh, uh, a solid signing. The same with Alexander Katai. Uh, as far as you know what you're going to get from Katai. He's pretty consistent. He's a good winger. And to be able to have the talent around him that he will have in L.A., I'm really excited about that signing for the Galaxy. Uh, Emiliano Insua. I'm not exactly sure if that's exactly how you pronounce it, but that's not our best uh, our best thing here at Sons of a Pitch Soccer Podcast as far as <laughs> pronunciation goes. But uh, he looks like a great signing. Uh I really like what I was seeing when I was doing a little bit of research about him. Seems really strong. Lots of, lot of great experience uh, for him. You know, he's played at some of the biggest clubs in the biggest leagues. So uh, definitely a great signing there. So really like the the talent that, that the Galaxy have brought in this season. As far as players out, Chris Pontius, who retired. Dave Romney was traded to Nashville. Uh, the probably most notable one on the players out, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, mutually agreed to part ways. Uh, we knew that's that how was you coming. want to put it. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bradford Jameson, Fabio Alvarez, Hugo Ariano, Servando Carrasco, Tomas Hilliard Arce, Juninho, Matt Lampson, Jao Pedro. All had their options declined, as well as Diego Polenta. Uh, Uriel Antuna's loan expired. Romain Allison Drini, his contract is over. And Jorgen Skeljevic on loan to Odense. Uh, so a lot of movement out. Nick, w- what are your thoughts on the players out for the Galaxy? So I think when you when you see all these guys having their options declined, it, those are kind of your younger players. You take a shot on them. Can they crack into the starting lineup? Probably not. Um, maybe you can re-sign them for, for a cheaper deal or something like that uh, down the road. But they're depth pieces. You know, that's all they are. Uh, maybe guys you want to drop down into LA2 or, you know, somewhere in the USL where you can maybe find some value for them. Uh, so I'm, I'm not too worried that the most or if I were a Galaxy fan, I would not be worried that most of these movements out are just guys having options declined. Uh, The one thing to note, Ariel Antuna uh, is now playing for Guadalajara down in Mexico. So that is probably a big loss for them. He he was a solid player. Uh, He could, at the worst case scenario, be an excellent backup for whoever is going to take over that starting spot. Um, So that would probably be a big big hit for them. Uh, And then Romain Alessandrini, like this, this is a guy who has become a household name in the MLS, uh, let alone a top player for the LA Galaxy. 
Uh, he's out of contract. I mean, his his Wikipedia page says he's still playing for the LA Galaxy, so I don't know if they were uh, able to come back and sign him to a different deal or if it's just, you know, he's still considered a free agent out there. Um, I'm going to try and find that up while we look at a few other things. I, d- I did want to mention about uh, Alexander Katai, one of the players in, coming in from Chicago. I feel like the LA Galaxy really got a windfall with the change in ownership and coaching and management here in Chicago because they really didn't know what to do with Katai, so they just kind of let him loose. He, LA picked him up on a free transfer. Uh, so the fact that you get a guy who is a reliable wing player with an eye for goal on a free transfer just shows you that Chicago had some mismanagement there to not be able to deal him uh, before he left the club. So I, I got to commend L.A. for picking him up and, and for building up some of these players that are coming in and are looking for some different options on the back end of the roster. So we'll see how, how if any homegrowns get signed uh, and what they want to do in their summer transfer window. All right, yeah, as far as... And that's uh, kind of my thoughts on, on the roster buildup, yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, as far as Allison Drini, I, I actually had the same thoughts uh, for him, so I went and double-checked the roster today, and he is not on the website. So I'm assuming he is uh, he is not playing for the Galaxy, and uh, who knows where he might end up uh, playing from, from there. So let's talk a little bit about the designated players for the LA Galaxy. Three DPs, and boy, are they big names. First off, heavier Chicharito Hernandez, the new signing from Sevilla. We all know Chicharito. Uh, we've got Jonathan Dos Santos and Christian Pavone. Those are three awesome designated players. Chicharito, I do have some th- some thoughts about and uh, some question marks. He has not produced a ton lately. I do think that will change because it is MLS. It's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit different playing in La Liga than it is playing in MLS. Obviously, MLS is not up to up to snuff with La Liga or the Premier League where he had spent time just pre- previous to Sevilla. So I think he can turn that around and probably produce here. Uh, However, the, the, the part that uh, I, I keep going back to, and unfortunately, you know, I know he's explained it, uh, he's clarified his comments, but the retirement, that this is the start of his retirement. I touched on it in a video uh, back when he first signed and that news came out. It does concern me that he even has that thought process going on. And I know he's explained it out. Well, this is, it, it happens for everybody. That's, you know, I get that. But the fact that you think that when you're coming here does concern me a bit. So maybe that was actually the, 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 the windfall that he caught from, from those comments. Maybe that will help push him to the next level to show people, Hey, you know what? I might've said that, but I'm, I'm going to prove you guys wrong. Um, and so I, I'm excited to see what he'll do. This is probably one of the biggest signings in MLS history. Uh, Jonathan DeSantos, you know what you're getting from him. He's a solid, solid player that is going to produce the same the same every year. He's going to give you the same type of play, uh, maybe a little bit better than, you know, and a little bit worse off each year, but it's pretty consistent. Uh, Christian Pavone, we saw what he could do last year in his transition into MLS and with the Galaxy, and uh, now he's a DP uh, that spot has gone to him now, and uh, now that he's uh, he's here officially through the, I believe the the loan was extended, uh, or he might even have been purchased. But it, he's a hell of a player and uh, a young player, and I'm really excited to see what he can do in a full season uh, with the Galaxy as as one of their leading men. And we saw a hell of a goal from uh, from him against TFC in their last preseason game, uh, a rocket from way outside the box after he like just took took on half of the Toronto's defense uh, in midfield. So definitely excited to see what these three guys can do this season. Nick, what are your thoughts on the designated players for LA? Yeah, I, I've never been a huge fan of, of the Galaxy, just you know being a Midwest guy and following the league the way they are. And I've never, ever supported uh, the Mexican national team, obviously being a United States fan here. Uh, but the fact that you've got Hernandez, Dos Santos, and Pavon as your three DPs for the Galaxy, that's as close as to much watch must watch soccer as you're going to get here in the MLS. Like any one of those three guys can come up with a top ten highlight reel type play at any point during during a match. For for Chicharito, for Hernandez, you, the conversation has to start with him. Like you said, it could be one of the biggest signings in MLS history, assuming he goes on to have a certain level of success with the Galaxy. Uh, he he has 
scored well in, in big leagues, but obviously he's past his Manchester United days. He's even past his Bayern Leverkusen days. Uh, but if he can regain some of that form in the MLS, and he'll probably be one of the main scoring options, or you think of his Mexican national team appearances, he is the number one scorer in Mexico's history. He's got 52 goals and a I, I want to say a little over a hundred performances uh, for Mexico. He's scoring every other game. So you put him now into LA where he is going to draw both the cultural Mexican fan base, as well as just the, a general MLS fan base because of his caliber and pedigree of play. He could really absorb that kind of energy in the stadium and just respond so well as a player on the field. And, and I think he needs that because he has taken so much flack uh, over the last several years being lackluster at West Ham, uh, you know, wanting to try to prove himself again, but never really getting that shot with with a Premier League club like that. Um, I think he could really come out and, ju- and just bag, you know, 20, 25 goals if he if he uh, if he stays healthy and if he really latches on to kind of the fan base and the energy. Uh, Dos Santos, you're right. He he has really been the engine over the last couple of years. It almost might be nice for him to step back and say, okay, the other two DPs got this. The rest of the roster got this. I don't have to play 100% every game in order for us to have a chance to win. Uh, it, it might, you might have some of that load management on Dos Santos like we kind of talked about with some of TFC's top players. Uh, if he can take a game off every now and then or, you know, get subbed out in the 60th, save his legs for a little bit, might be great. Same thing with Pavon. You know the quality. Let's see if he can take a step up and just make the the roster around him better. And I'm not just talking about the DPs. Uh, Christian Pavon is the kind of guy that can make every other man on the pitch that much better. And, and if he can do that, then the LA Galaxy are going to have a phenomenal season. That getting said, we've talked about our DPs, and typically they are the most important players on the team. And Mike, in, in your pre, pre-show pre prep, uh, you picked Chicharito to be the most important player for the LA Galaxy. Other than just the goal scoring, like what do you think is going to make him the most important player? Well, I think uh, the, the other the other options is kind of how I boiled it down to Chicharito. Uh, you know, if, if you're thinking Christian Pavone, uh, He's going to improve. He's a known a known commodity for them. Uh, he's going to do better than he did last season in the half season that he had. Uh, Jonah DeSantos, you know what you're getting from him. It's pretty consistent. I think it all kind of comes down to Chicharito as that replacement for Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Uh, we all saw last year with Zlatan, if he scored goals, the team did well. If he didn't score goals, the team did not do well. So... I think it's going to be Chicharito kind of falls right into that replacement spot, even though they did improve in other areas of the field. And that's going to help this team uh, to be a better club than they were last year for sure. So it's not all resting on him like it did on Zlatan. uh, But I I think he has to live up to the hype and score, you know, as you said, 20, 25 goals to, uh, to really have a successful season for the galaxy. And uh, I think he can do that. I think he will do that, but that's why I have him down as the most important player. Nick, do you agree or would you pick somebody else? Well, let me just say the most important non uh, Mexican national player uh, for me is going to be Sebastian legit. Like he, this is a a huge season for him for his whole career because he's always been a, a very good player. Uh, an above average midfielder as far as MLS standards, he seems to shine most when he's wearing the red, white, and blue. Like he plays very well uh, in his role for the United States men's national team. Now he's got to step up and play that much better for the LA galaxy. And if he can do that in the midfield and let the three DPs for the galaxy roster, just run amok and go score goals and cause havoc in the opposing defense. If he can continue to provide service for them and play some de- defensive midfield uh, for them, then legit can really elevate the rest of the attack. Uh, he can be a good pivot point to transition from defense to offense. Um, so I think you got to watch legit as much as we're all going to watch uh, the DPs, you know, produce highlight reels Watch legit, watch how he's playing, uh, and watch that midfield and how they want to feed that. Again, if Katai gets some opportunities as well, uh, we'll see how he can add to the attack. But you're right, Chicharito is the most important player for them on and off the pitch. I mean, they got to justify this investment. 
with wins and with revenue. Uh, so he's he's definitely the most important player in that aspect. Yeah, and and the revenue has uh, seemingly been pouring in since he come in. The jersey sales, uh, as well as the the season tickets. I, I forget what the uh, there was what exactly the metric was, but it was something around you know they they sold a bunch of season ticket deposits or something like that as soon as he got announced, uh, which I'm sure they didn't have that many available to begin with. But uh, you know it was, it was pretty quick uh, transition. So definitely uh, that from a revenue standpoint, it's a great signing. Right for the league, uh, it's going to bring it's going to bring that Mexican national team star into the league. That's going to really uh, bump up the viewership as well, uh, and, and you know, plus the the skill that he has. Obviously, there is some skill there. Uh, he's not the same guy he was in his Manchester United days, like you stated, Nick. But he's still a good player. So, uh, speaking of some, hey, some good players, yeah. Go ahead. Before, before we get into the to the starting eleven and the youngsters here. So we, we've been talking about Chicharito so much. How does he play into the Galaxy LAFC rivalry? Do you think that it's going to make it, it – everyone's already saying it, like it's, it's Vela versus Hernandez. It's, it's Carlos Vela, the golden boy of MLS, uh, versus Chicharito, the golden boy of – you know, the Mexican national team, like their teammates there, like there's all these storylines. Do you you think it's going to affect the way that this crosstown rivalry goes? Like, do you have any more interest in LAFC versus LA Galaxy now that Chicharito is signed? I personally don't. Uh, I think it's going to be a hell of a game. It's a good rivalry. And uh, the two teams are both good. So that, that always makes a rivalry game fun. It's not, you know, obviously they've got that geographical rivalry. Um, but if one team sucks and the other team's good, which I'm sure the L.A. fans would love to see their team be the good team and the other team sucking. But, uh, you know, both right. teams are really good. So it's going to make a great game. And. Yeah, of course you've got that that Mexican aspect of okay, you got the Golden Boy of MLS at Vela, but he's with the Mexican national team, and now you've got uh, you know Chicharito. Th- that'll that'll all play into the marketing of it, and, th- and that's fine. Um, but it's not to me that doesn't change that game that much. It's the El Trafico. It's going to be a great rivalry game. These two teams are don't like each other. The fans don't like each other, and uh, it, it's going to be fun to watch regardless. Sure, I actually kind of see it like it, if you look in other sports, how when you're marketing a major league baseball game, you put the two pitchers up, or when you're marketing an NFL game, it's the two starting quarterbacks. They never actually have any interaction with each other whatsoever <laughs> during the course of the gameplay. Uh, but that's what it's built, and to me, that's kind of what it's going to look like here. It's like Chicharito versus Vela. No, they they don't play. They're not going to defend each other. They're not going to mark each other, probably. They're going to be on opposite ends of the pitch for the majority of the 90 minutes. I mean, if if it comes down to a pair of penalty kicks and the two of them happen to take it, maybe then you can justify that storyline of one played better than the other uh, or or one was got the best of the other. But I this isn't like a 1v1 matchup between the two of them. So uh, I think, yeah, the marketing is going to be phenomenal, but I don't know if the the actual impact on the game is going to be Vela Chicharito. It's going to be more about the Galaxy's revamped roster versus the defending best team in MLS. That's how I'm going to look at it. Right, for sure. Now, moving along to the breakout youngsters, uh, two of the youngsters that we've got highlighted here, kind of, we had uh, some chats with some folks out on Reddit and uh, tried to get a a judge of who probably are going to be the two guys that would be the best candidates for breakout youngsters. According to Reddit and the and the local fans of the LA Galaxy, uh, Julian Araujo, uh, for an 18 year old right back, uh, U.S. Youth, youth national team was on the 2019 uh, Under 20 World Cup squad. Uh, had 18 appearances last season. Everybody was really high on him as as breaking out as the right back. Uh, I think he he might even start at that position for uh, for LA Galaxy. It might not. Uh, it, 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 I think he'll probably break in halfway through the season, at least according to my projected 11 uh, that I put together. But uh, as well, Efrain Alvarez, the 17-year-old attacking midfielder, the kid has amazing talent. The only question to me is, is he going to get the minutes that he needs to really break out? He had, you know, he had a good amount of minutes last season, uh, but uh, will he get minutes, you know, from from Leggett, uh, from you know, those spots in the midfield? 
uh, that's the only question for me. If he does get the minutes, he's going to break out because this kid's really, really good. The crosses he puts in are beautiful. The passing is great. He can finish. Uh, he, he has all the tools. So th- those are the two uh, that, that I think will probably break out. Uh, Nick, what, what are your thoughts on those two guys? Yeah, I was waiting for Efren Alvarez to break out last season. I, I really thought he would get a lot more time. I, I, come on, it's 16, 17 years old. Okay, I guess I understand why they didn't have him, you know, playing more and more and more. Um, but he he has shown that he has the the physical stature to to kind of go toe to toe with some of these MLS players. Uh, he he's a big guy uh, at five eight. Um, okay, maybe not a big guy at five eight, but <laughs> but relative, like his his body frame, like he he can handle it. Um, he developed a really good relationship last season with Zlatan, and Zlatan took an interest in him uh, while he was at training camp and and working with some of the LA two players and things of that nature. So you know that if if this guy who is one of the all time greats in the sport takes an interest in you, it, it's a pretty good sign. So we yeah. know that he's got the talent. It's just I think the coaching staff's trying to bring him along. They don't want to push him too hard too soon. And then, you know, he played in a number of Mexican U-17 youth games last season, so maybe that affected uh, some of his minutes. Um, but, yeah, I expected him to break out last season, so I will expect him to break out again this season. If if Leggett goes down hurt or if anyone in that midfield needs any sort of breaks or rest or whatever, or if for some reason Joe Corona starts slowing down and, and just doesn't have anything left in the tank, then, uh, then yeah, we should see Alvarez get a, get a number of, of appearances, if not a number of starts. I agree with that. All right, so speaking of the projected 11, uh, they played their last preseason game against TFC in a 4-3-3, uh, so we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, in goal, David Bingham. Uh, I think there's no question there. He He's the guy in goal for the Galaxy. Uh, Insua, Sterez, Gonzalez, and Felcher along the back line. Uh, Corona, Legette, Dos Santos in the midfield with Katai, Chicharito, and Pavone up front. What I see there is that's really, really scary front three. Alexander, Katai, Chicharito, and Christian Pavone. Uh, that, that's that's going to mess with some defenses. Oh, no doubt about it. This is going to be, I think I said it when we were talking about LAFC or, or talking about other teams too. The best offense is good defense, and it's it's where the MLS is going as a league. It's an attack-driven league. It's a goal-scoring league. Uh, so to have guys up front like Chicharito, Pavone, and Katai, all guys who can score, all guys who can score really from anywhere within like 30 yards, uh, you know, Katai showed it in Chicago. He can make a run into the box or you can cut it back and take a shot from 20 yards out. Um, Hernandez, same thing. Pavon, same thing. These guys can score in a variety of ways. I mean, I'm actually kind of curious to see what they end up doing on set pieces and corner kicks and, and things of that nature. Cause I, I, I don't know how many of these guys have made a name for themselves as, you know, aerial type players. I would imagine we see a lot of short corners or a lot of set plays off of set pieces uh, for the Galaxy instead of just, hey, there's our giant center back coming up the field. We're going to pick him out uh, like some other teams can do. Uh, like, like we used to see Kendall Waston do all the time with, you know, prior to coming to Cincinnati, uh, you know, things of that nature or big bodies. Um, so I expect a lot more play, play at the feet, a lot of quick play from these guys trying to find and, and just create a shot opportunity. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's an excellent lineup. I mean, I'm just looking right now at some of the other forwards on the roster to see because I don't know if uh, if Katai is going to end up as as a potential starter for them. Um, he he's got the the skill and the MLS experience, but maybe we do see uh, Sasha Kleshin break that starting lineup, uh, and they they maybe move Katai. And and put uh, God, I'm stumbling over everything here as I'm thinking about formations in my head and every, all these different players. Maybe we do see uh, Sasha Kleshin come into the midfield, and maybe they play him as more of a central midfield, attacking midfield, so he can distribute a little bit. And if that's the case, if they change from a four three three to maybe a four two three one that we see a lot of clubs around the world playing nowadays, that Katai ends up coming in as a sub if they need offense, and then Kleshin gets a start. And maybe some more midfield to kind of distribute and, and not 
rely on on wing play as much. That that's yeah. kind of my thought on this roster, but it's preseason. Again, they've kind of revamped a little bit, so you never know what they're going to come out and start with until game one. Uh, I, and Mike, we see it in the NFL when it's preseason; it's very vanilla. No one's running their full playbook. Do you have any inkling? Are MLS teams doing the same thing? Are they just kind of trotting out guys to see how combinations look, or are they really saying like, "Hey, let's go out and play a full game and see what we can do"? I think there, there's multiple factors. It's not strictly just the game, right? Like in, in the regular season and in the playoffs, your goal is to win. The goal is to is to play the game, you know, and, and that's strictly it. Well, in the preseason, you're talking about, you know, stamina, building up stamina. That That's a huge part of it, right? Trying to stay away from injuries. So you're not going 100, you know, 120 uh, percent out in the field. It's hard for these guys as professional athletes to tone it down, but there's no question in the preseason they're toning it down a little bit, uh, except for Christian Pavone, who scored that crazy rocket uh, that that we saw there against TFC. Um, but, you know, overall, I think there, there's multiple facets involved. You want to see some of the younger guys try and give them a chance to, uh, you know, to, to get minutes that they normally wouldn't get in the regular season to kind of see, uh, is this somebody we can bring in off the bench? Is this somebody that could play – for us if necessary if somebody was to get hurt um you know you got trialists some clubs have trialists there's so many different factors in this preseason that uh you know it's not a full run out like it would in a regular game so um that's why i I don't really take preseason results much you can have a team that can go four and oh in the preseason and then start the season oh and four and and vice versa right so it's it it's it's too many. There's too many things to to be uh, considered in the preseason, but I, I expect uh, you know the, the galaxy to to come out really strong once the season starts. They're um, you know as, as far as predictions go, I want to talk a little bit about that. This team, as far as the yeah. talent that they have in you know uh, in one through eleven, and that starting eleven is is sick. So I, I think. As far as the ceiling goes for them, I think they can win win the Western Conference. Uh, they could finish out number one and and go really hard there. Uh, as far as the floor, I could see them just barely missing out in the playoffs. That means there's injuries involved. Chicharito regresses, does not, you know, does not turn out to be the signing that everybody hoped he would, um, and you know the the Galaxy just fall apart. And that's kind of my thoughts there. Nick, Nick what are your thoughts on on predictions? Oh, yeah. The the ceiling for this team is first in the West, MLS Cup, maybe two different trophies. Um, if, if they just catch fire and, and keep on it throughout the course of the season, maybe they're in contention for a domestic treble, a shield or a domestic double, the shield and the cup. Uh, there's potential for them to to play for the U.S. Open Cup. You know, if some of the other MLS clubs don't want to emphasize uh, the M- the Open Cup as much, then maybe LA Galaxy, as they develop a little bit more of their depth, if they make a few moves in the summer transfer window, could compete for multiple trophies here. Um, so that's that's absolutely their ceiling, given their talent, at least on paper. Um, the floor, I, you know, Mike, I know you're noting that they could they could just miss out on the playoffs if if everything kind of falls apart. But again, with these three DPS uh, and and their kind of core group of players. Uh, I don't see them missing the playoffs, you know, maybe six, seven seed. And then, you know, it's a one game toss up in the MLS playoffs now, and they have to go travel to Seattle or cross town to LAFC where kind of that you've never beaten us has gone away now. So uh, I think that would be the floor would be getting knocked out in the first round for this LA galaxy team. Uh, But yeah, there's, there's no doubt. There's a lot of excitement on, on both sides of this LA rivalry and uh we're i'm really kind of looking forward to seeing how how they come out that first game when you have a star like chicharito coming into the league for the first time and and kind of what we expect from them yeah so that first game you can find uh their first game on univision it's going to be nationally televised there on univision twitter and uh T-U-D-N. Uh, we've got Houston Dynamo hosting the Galaxy at uh, 2.30 Central Time, so 12.30, kind of an early start for the Pacific time frame there. Uh, should be a fun one to watch. Houston has revamped their attack. It's a Western Conference matchup. Should be a fun game to watch. 
And I know as uh, we are, and I'm sure all the fans are just itching for uh, soccer to start. It's getting close. Only a few more days, uh, you know, 10 or so from when we uh, we release this episode. So uh, thanks for joining us for our LA Galaxy 2020 MLS season preview. Make sure to hit subscribe below on YouTube. Find our podcast wherever you find your podcasts. Follow us on Twitter at SOP Soccer.